just when you thought it was safe to go onto iTunes. This is Next Level Guy. The only website that makes self-development as fun as going to the movies. It's time to take the red pill and escape the Matrix. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Next Level Guy Show podcast with your host, Ian Dawson Mackay. Today's guest is John Call. John is otherwise known as Juji Mufu. Juji is an internet superstar. He's as strong as an ox, unbelievable flexible, very intelligent and a humble and warm guy. And he does insane physical challenges like deadlifting and then backflipping or deadlifting and then jumping into an ice bath. His tricks and uh, videos are unbelievable and something you should definitely check out. And easily one of my favourite ever interviews, we discuss his epic training, unbelievable tricking, manhood and marriage, how he uses his creativity and intensity to build an epic life, and so much more. But first, a quick word about our affiliates. I've built up some amazing special deals, listener discounts, and special offers. For example, some of my favourite deals are for the athletic fit yet super comfy jeans from Barbell Apparel. And if you want to get 10% off all your orders, use Next Level Guy at the checkout. Another would be the Gains Box, which is an awesome monthly subscription service of fitness tools, gadgets and snacks, which can be sent directly to your door. If you want to get the women you've always wanted in your life, you should check out The Natural by RSD Max. If you want to get better in the gym, you should check out The Lifting Lyceum by Greg Nichols and Omar Uzaf. And if you want to fuel your training and your transformations, you can't go wrong with the great protein from The Protein Works and Alpha Brain and Shroom Tech from those great people at onit.com. To see these deals and much, much more, please go to www.nextlevelguy.com forward slash affiliates. That's www.nextlevelguy.com forward slash affiliates. And now... To the interview with Juji. I hope you enjoy. Now you're somebody who I didn't know that much about until I started looking into you and I love the insanity, the flips and the twists and the the weightlifting but I really started to enjoy the messages you were putting out to people and the way you looked at life. So for somebody who doesn't know you and I don't think there'll be that many, can you tell me who you are and why you're well known? Oh yeah of course. Uh, thanks for the introduction as well <laughs> and inviting me to the podcast first of all. Um, but I've been training for about 20 years now. Um, I'm 31, so almost 20 years. I started when I was like 13. Uh, my introduction to fitness was Taekwondo. So it's a martial art and uh, it was great. It was actually, it was actually uh, a blessing now that I look back because martial arts like traditional ones like that are so the, the, <laughs> the experiences after I got into fitness later, I realized, uh, how important it was that I experienced that. And we could talk about that if, if you have specific questions. But I went from Taekwondo and I got into something called tricking, which is like the acrobatics. Uh, you know, it's just mixing martial arts with gymnastics. It's all the aerial stuff you see me do, all the flips and stuff. And then I got into weight training, uh, you know, deadlifting, squats. I was, I was hooked on the compound lifts, the power lifts, and trying to maintain my body weight at a smaller size because I wanted it to complement my – my flips and stuff. And then I got into bodybuilding in my mid twenties and now here I am. Um, the thing is I just never really stopped doing all the other things I started. So a lot of people transition from one thing to the next. I just kept doing it all. I mean, that's what I really enjoyed was that message about, you know, you only stop when you just stop doing it, you know, and it's like play like a kid, enjoy yourself, you know, do jumping around and flips like a kid and you'll never stop being able to do it. And, you know, I seen you mention in another interview that when you were younger, you know, you had issues making friends and, you know, you spent a lot of time on your own. Do you think that affected you getting into like martial arts and, you know, the the person that you've become? The, uh, have you let more of the outgoing side of yourself out because of that? Has it helped you in any way? Well, uh, good question. Uh, technically, I'm an introvert. Um, I tend to recharge. uh when I need space, I need, I need time to myself. And I've had to train myself to be extroverted and very outgoing because of what I do now. I'm a social media influencer. I'm a social media athlete. So I'm sort of putting myself out there as my job. So you just, you just got to do it. You know, it's just what I do. But, 
um, I do pull away and I recharge in my own head. I kind of live in my own head. And that's why a lot of the things I do and a lot of things I think are maybe kind of different and kind of differently colored, I suppose, because I do spend a lot of time in my own head. Uh, I'm not really influenced by others quite as much as some people are. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Taekwondo, the reason I got into it was because I was picked on, uh, you know, in my right before I turned into a teenager, had some friends. They kind of dumped me. I was kind of by myself. I can remember crying, you know, just by myself. I just had no one. I just had no friends. I was just a kid with no friends and stuff. And I made this new friend in school, and he invited me to do a Taekwondo class, and my self-esteem was rock bottom at the time. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll try this out. And completely changed my life. I mean, it was great for my self-esteem. I made a lifelong friend. I, uh, it just set me on a completely tra- different trajectory for life. And was that something that you had planned when you were a kid? You know, did you have a goal when you were younger in mind? Like, you know, I wanted to be a famous footballer, which has sadly passed. But, you know, did you want to be something particular when you were younger? Mm, I mean, in between the time between uh, me actually getting into fitness and taekwondo and stuff all i wanted to do was play video games i was just a kid that just stayed at the house and played video games and you know had friends who he just just lost all my friends <laughs> i mean what really happened was most of my friends were a couple years older than me and they went on to high school and i was still in middle school and you know that's just kind of it you know they just leave and then i'm not cool anymore i'm younger than them and uh yeah <laughs> i mean so well, I mean, I was I was bullied when I was younger, and in when I was in primary school, which I think uh-huh. it's your younger grade school, you know, I was bullied because I have like quite big lips, and now I find that everybody's getting these collagen injections to make their lips bigger. So now, what I was bullied for is what everybody wants. So yeah, yeah you know, and <laughs> you, you've certainly taken like that negative experience, and you've made it such a success, and that's what I was really interested in is that the person you are now. You wouldn't imagine that could be somebody who's shy, introverted. You know, like how do you keep that energy and the interest and the, you know, the you're so humble but you're so positive and happy and friendly. How do you keep that going day in day out? You mean as of now, or you well, know, I mean it's. I mean, do you ever use like when you're weightlifting? Do you use ever the pain from before? You know how people say use the rage inside you, or you know, do you just are you just enjoying life that just keeps that level? <laughs> no, I've grown. I mean, I've grown to forgive most of the, most of the things that I thought were other people's, whatever they have, might have possibly have done to me in a way. I've either forgiven them or kind of learned to look at it from their perspective and sort of accepted that, hey, you know, if I met these people today, I'd be okay with them. I don't really tap into that. To that real sort of rage. No, I don't do that. Um, to to kind of fuel workouts. That's not something I typically will do. Now I'll get hype and stuff for workouts, but you know, it, it's sort of a, I would say maybe it's sort of a similar thing though, in regards to how I sort of live in my head more. Um, I see things a little differently. I just, I, I have a good mind to visualize certain things. And when I'm working out, I, I sort of tap into this sort of, I can just sort of visualize this intensity, this, you know, just turn on the music real loud, just sort of, you know, I could give myself chill bumps just thinking about it. Just like I can just kind of like tap. I think it's a trained capacity, to be honest, Ian. I mean, being able to just sort of summon that sort of like force. It's just, you know, I can sit there and just switch it on and off and I can actually get a biological response just from thinking of it. And that's how I sort of, you know, get into a set real hard. I don't really think about bad people or anything. I just sort of pull myself into this other experience, I suppose. No, it's, it's a great thing to look at because you can feel the joy and the pleasure coming when you watch your videos. You know, it's not this kind of like skull bashing music and, you know, you just you, you look like you're having great fun and you've got a great team with you as well. So for people who haven't seen any of your videos, and I doubt there will be that many, can you give a little overview of your training I, philosophy? You know, you, ha- you mentioned them on your website, but... You know, where does things like supersetting, deadlifts, and an ice bath come from? You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that was really hard, by the way. <laughs> it looked insane. 
<laughs> that was, oh my God, that was, I thought I was going to die. Uh, okay, so, you know, that's not real training. That's just, okay, you get a training response from it, of course. You know, it's, your body is going to, is going to have a, a similar response to it as a normal training session, but it, it's, I'm not doing it like, to get results. I'm doing it because it's an idea I have and I have to act on it because it's insane. It's just like, Oh, I got it. I just got to do this. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to superset 20 rep sets of deadlifts with ice bath for three circuits. Just, it has to be done. I have to experience this. So I just have to, I have to see what it's about, <laughs> you know? And, and when I have, I, when I have, when I have ideas that get me excited like that, that really pushes me. I mean, Okay, here's here's a funny example. I recently just posted a, a clip on Instagram of me doing landscaping in the chair splits and uh, like lawn mowing, weed whacking and all these things. My my wife had been begging me to like do the lawn. Okay, like mow the lawn. It's just terrible looking out there. And uh, when I had this idea for this video, I was like, oh, I need a lawn mower. I dropped everything I was doing to go buy a lawn mower. I literally just like just went out. Bought a lawnmower and, you know, I had to go to like three stores to get the one I wanted because they kept, it's like the model. It's just, it was just, when I had the idea, I had to act on it. I had to do everything I could just to get it done. And I, I just started immediately. I mean, a lot of ideas, like if you have good ideas, if if you're, uh, if you get in the habit of like thinking of new things, you know, every now and again, you're going to get one and, and it's weekly basis. You're going to get something. It's just like, it's so exciting to you that you have to do it immediately. And that's what the deadlift ice bath one was for me. I was just like, Oh my God, I got to do this. I just dropped everything and want and bought a bunch of bags of ice and just started deadlifting. <laughs> I, I can remember watching the video and it was just like the, even just opening up the lorry, suddenly there's a guy squatting a barbell in the back of it. You know, and it was just the insanity of it all. And I just loved the, like the fun that was coming from it, you know, and it's, you know, when you're watching you wearing like a horse head and running through fire holding a barbell or making a pizza with an ab roller, you think just, <laughs> you know, so I mean, do you just sit and do like just general like training for strength and fitness and your acrobatics and then just when one hits you, you just go, right, I'm off to do that? Pretty much, yeah. There's a nice even split between, oh, this is crazy. I'm just going to do this. And, uh, oh, I just have to do my normal training as well, and I just do it. But they kind of cross over. Um, I'd say about, you know, 30% of the time they'll cross over. Uh, I'll get into one of them that's actually, like, really physically taxing, this crazy idea. I mean, for the, for example, the one I just mentioned, the uh, the deadlift ice bath and the uh, chair splits where I was doing landscaping. I had to do, like, an hour and a half of chair splits to get that video to get all the shots I needed for it. It was like a 15-second Instagram clip. It did take me about an hour and a half to do it. And a couple reshots. So, I mean, if that's not good flexibility training, I don't know what is. You're just doing the chair splits for an hour and a half over and over again. It's just like, sure, it was for a video, but it was hard. <laughs> like, it was. And same with the deadlift ice bath. I mean, AMRAP, 20 set sets of deadlifts. I mean, how many people actually just do that normally anyway? I mean, it seemed like the best way to, to make the ice bath as bad as possible was to be out of breath deadlifting. How do you do that? You do a lot of reps. So yeah i mean they do cross over I'll, I'll get a good training response from some of these dumb ideas but if not i'm i'll do my normal training and sometimes they'll turn into something really weird and it'll become a video again so they just kind of move back and forth between one another so how do you look at these things i mean you know do you just think oh i wonder what how we could do that and yeah let's oh i could throw them with that one with an ice bath or you know is there like a method to the madness or do you just literally go yeah let's give that a shot you know, where, where does this creativity come from? Uh, yeah, uh, okay. So the creativity comes from a few places. One is, uh, you know, when you have an idea, you just write it down immediately. I mean, I've had three ideas this week I need to act on. I just wrote them down, and and that's that. Uh, you just keep good track of them. I mean, a lot of people have ideas, they just don't write them down, and they forget. The moment you start tracking them, the more you realize, wow, I have a lot of ideas. This is great. And it sort of motivates you. Um, the other thing is, like, if I don't have an idea, I literally have to just sit there and think until I have one. I mean, you have to – creativity is, is sort of a trained capacity in itself as well as a lot of other things. So the more you use it, the better you get at it. I, I'm pretty good at coming up with ideas on demand now. It's just sort of like I'm sitting there. It's like I need something. You know, my job is to post – at a certain interval on social media to entertain people to have fun. I mean, it is a job. I love it. But sometimes I don't have an idea, and I just have to sit there and just brute force an idea until I have one. And some of my best ideas have come that way. 
I mean, and it's certainly something that, you know, to make money is certainly a, a motivation, but you generally seem like you're just doing it for the sake of doing it. So you must have a very uh, forgiving wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I would be doing this anyway. In fact, I was doing this for about up until the past two years. I was doing this just I'll, I'll be doing it anyway. I had a, mm-hmm. a day job for seven years and I just did it on the side and built my fitness business and my profile and my audience up. You know, mm-hmm. and it, if I wasn't making money, I would just I would continue to do this, Ian. I'd still be doing it. And I think that's why people like you so much. You know, you can see it's not like these forced videos that we see on social media. It's actually you just having a laugh with some friends, doing fitness stuff, having you know, doing the kind of insanity things that we think, oh, it'd be cool if you could do that, or you know, you're actually living that. And it entertains, and you know you're such a humble guy as well with it. So I, I don't know anybody that hasn't watched and really f- loved you from it. So you used, <laughs> you used to work in biotechnology. Now, uh-huh. do you think that kind of analytical, you know, procedurally driven things has that helped you in any way? Because I've noticed that when you talked about traveling away, you know, you have your labels for your packing stuff, you have your labels for your uh, meal preps and stuff like that you know has has that science background does that really kind of helped you with the way you look at fitness life or as it just a was it just a job well actually it sort of came before that job so i'm my that's one of my natural innate like personality predispositions is i'm i've always been sort of organized and really sort of respected uh, the importance of it and labeling things as part of organization. So is figuring out where things go, where to keep them, how to change the logistics of your daily life. And, you know, so since I'm already sort of like that, I'm minded like that, I, I just sort of drifted into the sciences in college and, um, you know, got the job because it's sort of, you know, the way I am. And then it was just a day job. It just made me money on the side as I, uh, uh, I just wanted a job that got out of my way. That's that's really my, and that's actually one of my advice for for a lot of young people is if you don't know what you're going to do, at least just do something that is sort of like middle of the road. It pays you enough money, but at the same time, it's just sort of is easy and just it gets out of your way. So you continue to continue to do the things on the side that you really like to do, whether it's working out or building something or. Or whatever it is. For me, it was fitness. So I just wanted a job that got out of my way. And I had it. The job was great. It certainly didn't stand in my way. Uh, the only reason I quit it was because I was making way too much money doing fitness. It just made no sense anymore to stay yeah. uh, you know, restricted to that schedule. I love the video when you you know you announce you're giving up your job and the one when you're touring around your um, your business and you know it's like you're just stacks of protein powder and the uh, as it was it the cream of rice and it was just yeah. watch, just watching it thinking that is a perfect job you know it's like oh i wanted um to have a computer that i could do my own stuff on so i just started carrying it around with me and you're just like yeah <laughs> yeah that was before i figured out laptops are okay i just carried my desktop around everywhere i was like a land party on a daily basis <laughs> So what, you know, is there such a thing now as a typical day for you? Because you seem to travel and do so much and, you know, you're at all these expos and all these kind of things. So can you have such a thing as a typical day? Man, you know, I I think it might be healthy for me to have a typical day now. I mean, I quit my job almost a year ago. And ever since then, I'm pretty much my own boss. I am my own boss. I'm 100% my own boss. Um, And I've noticed over the over the course of this year, it's been like 10 months. I've slowly sort of slipped out of certain routines and stuff and I'm good at getting work done, but I think it would be healthier for me to have a little bit more of a routine day. Yeah. I mean, there's certain things I do every day. It's just sometimes I just sort of go with the flow a little bit too much, you know, it's actually one of the things I'm working on improving, but, uh, I would say the ideal for me would be to have like certain blocks of time, uh, during a day or during a week where it's like, I'm going to do this. Now, whatever happens during that time can be something different. It's like, I go to work out at these times and just whatever happens happens, or I'm going to work on business stuff at these times and whatever happens happens. But, um, so the variation is still kind of built in, but yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, I don't think there is a typical day for me, but I sort of wish there was a little bit more typicalness in a day so that I have a little bit more structure. So you mentioned there, I mean, 
I can't imagine just normality when you watch some of your videos, you think that they would be just such a fun place to be around. But what kind of things do you do daily? You know, do you like use like meditation? Do you prep your meal in the morning or, you know, do you have rituals or routines or just do you just get up and face life as it comes? Uh, <laughs> a little bit of both. Yeah, actually, it's a, it's kind of a bullshit answer, but a little bit of, I mean, it sounds like a bullshit answer to me. It's a little bit, it's honestly, it's a little bit of both. It's, uh, there's certain things I'm sort of out, I'm always going to do in the morning. I'm always going to drink coffee in the morning and I've been playing with my cat a lot in the morning. <laughs> it's just like drinking coffee, playing with a cat for 15 minutes, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's that crazy. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like, Hey, it's a fun morning. You know, it's, it starts, it puts me in a good mood. Uh, but uh, other than that, um, I mean, there's certain rituals. There's certain things I always do to prepare for certain things. So if I'm going to work out, uh, I've figured out, you know, the best way to do it is just to get everything, you know, ready. Get all your workout drinks ready. Get your uh, get your workout clothes ready. You know, set, you know, set yourself a little bit extra time to get ready for your workout. For me, it's half an hour or so is a pretty good amount of time when I'm already, you know, in my garage gym or whatever. And just make sure everything is is a okay before I start because when everything's prepared really well, you just feel really empowered. So there's certain rituals like that. I know whether I work out at, you know, 1030 in the morning or 230 in the afternoon, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter as long as I always, you know, do the sort of the takeoff ritual. You know what I mean? I mean, and do you have like set things that you eat regularly? Have you kind of moved into like meal prepping? Cause I noticed you have a brilliant meal prep video where you know you, you cook and must be like about a week's worth of food which would probably feed a couple hundred people but you know mm -hmm. how do you still do that on a on a large scale i mean do you reckon meal preps are great things for guys who sit there and go oh i haven't got time to go to the gym i haven't got time oh to yeah this. oh yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent uh a thing about meal prep a lot of people don't understand is i mean the real power of meal prep is freedom it gives you the freedom to not have to think about food. Imagine if you didn't have to eat, okay? Like, oh, that's impossible. You have to eat. There's no, there's no point. Yeah, no, really. Imagine that you don't have to eat food. That's what meal prep is like. The choice is made. You don't have to spend energy uh, trying to make a choice of what to eat. You can spend that psychic energy thinking of stupid video of ideas instead, you know? <laughs> you, you just – basically the food's there. You eat it. And – there's more there. There's more going on there than just that. It's like, look, if I don't eat this food, it's going to go bad. It's a waste of money. I, I better eat it. So it's not only is the choice made, but there's incentive to eat it because you don't want to waste it. So it's just like, okay, you're free from hunger. You're free from the choice of what to eat. You're, you've already set yourself up for dietary success because you've already planned ahead of time. Like, Hey, this is the right stuff for my body to achieve my goals. And so you, yeah, doing that ahead of time for three, five, however many days is totally very, very important for reasons beyond just like preparing, <laughs> you know, it's so important. I mean, because that was one of the things I really liked about you was you just talk to people like, you know, it was just common sense. It wasn't like, oh, you need to have a gym session four days a week. You have to do this, this and this, a day of cardio. You were just like... If you don't like doing it, don't do it. If you've got a job that's stopping you doing it, get an easy job. You know, you you had this way of making everything so simple and tell them to stop overcomplicating it and just do it. So do you think that's the biggest issue we're facing nowadays is guys are sort of got so many options, we just don't know what to do? Oh, yeah. There's actually a great book on that. It's called The uh, the Paradox of Choice. I think it's his name is Barry Swartz. I might be the last name be, may be wrong, but I know his first name's Barry. It's The Paradox of Choice. Have you ever read the book? I don't think so. It's a short little book. It's it's not too long. It's an average book, and it came out maybe about 10 years ago, I'd imagine. And uh, the book is about how you have – it's it's about decision fatigue. So if you're faced with an innumerable amount of decisions, you tend to not – really be able to make a decision as well. But on top of that, it's about the type of decision maker you are. So he, he creates two different types of decision makers. You got a maximizer and a satisficer. So a maximizer is a person who stresses out all the time whether the decision is the best. And then there's the other person who, you know, what is what is good enough? What is, what is you know, right below perfect? What is right below the best? And the people who tend to make choices like what is 
what is right below the best tend to be happier people. Now, for reasons, you know, for all the reasons you could read the book, but just right off the top of my head, it's just because you're going to make a decision quicker, so you're going to be able to just get on with it. You know, if it's just like, if it's good enough, just do it. And then if it's not, then just fix it later. It's just, just make decisions. And, uh, you know, apart from that, saving yourself from having to make decisions is the other thing you do. If you don't have to make decisions for everything, if you've already made them ahead of time, like meal prep, the food's made. You know, if you've, if you've already like set certain things in your life to where you take the decision making out of it, it frees up a lot of energy. So does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, and do you think is that where we go wrong mostly is that we overcomplicate things? We, you know, we have to have a perfect plan rather than just doing it and, you know, making amendments as we go. Do you see, like, is there, are, are we overcomplicating things with our addiction to technology and stuff like that? You know, what, what do you see is the biggest problems with guys nowadays? Mm, the biggest problems with guys nowadays. So, hmm. Because the analysis, it's moving. Thing, you know, it really, yeah. that kind of thing really affects me. Uh, you know, I overcomplicate things in my head, and I have to keep remembering your videos and just going, "Stop thinking about it, just do it, fix it as you go along." You know, it really, it really, I don't want to say spoke to me, but you know, it really helped me that seeing that to to see a guy your size and success saying, "I don't really think about this, I just do it, and then I adjust to it." You know. Mm -hmm. I know it's I know it's uh, over complicated uh, under complicating it, but it's... no, no, no. Uh, well, I mean, just sort of as a quick aside here, um, there's a good relationship between complication and simplification. Uh, the, one of the guys I used to work at at the biotech job I used to work at, uh, he had this this saying he used to say all the time, and I used to think it was retarded. And then, and then as I've gotten older, I was like, you know, he was right. And his uh, thing was, there's no simple solution to complicated problems. And I was like, oh, sure, there's simple, you know, I thought he was wrong. Again, it was, there's no simple solutions to complicated problems. So there's a lot of problems we face in life that are complicated and there's no such thing as a simple solution. The reason we come to simplification is because we've already worked through the complications, complications of it. And, uh, it's, it just becomes, it sort of looks simple from the outside. And it's sort of the art of it. People who are doing things that make it look simple, it's an art. It's just, you know, it's not just because they chose a simple route. And just there's a lot more going on behind it. You just have to sort of get used to and uh, accept that, you know, you have to accept both. You have to you have to be okay with working through the complications to arrive to the simple solution. You have to be okay choosing simpler things to solve. It's it's. <laughs> Yeah, I know I'm just sort of tripping on my own words here, but one of the things that I that I think is sort of a hallmark of the way I think is um, I'm OK holding two contradictory ideas in my head at the same time and I'm still able to function. You know, it's like, oh, this is the right way, but this is also the right way. Screw it. I'm just going to do something. You know, it's fine. I'm OK not knowing. I mean, I love, that. I love that. I mean, I think that's one of our biggest fears is not knowing. You know, we want everything to be out, laid out and we don't want to do anything if there's a chance we might fail. You know, it's like you were saying, I think, in a, one of the backflip videos was you're going to tumble, you're going to fit, you're going to fall and hurt yourself. But, you, you know, you're just going to get back up and do it again. And yeah. it's something I mean, I avoided doing the podcast for ages and ages and now i absolutely love it with a passion but that was my biggest fear was what well, if i made a mistake i make a hundred a day you know yeah i, I mean have, um, starting the podcast was probably a mistake for some people like when they listen to me but um so you have a great network of friends you know the guys that keep pushing you and pushing you can you tell me a little bit about you know your friends in the videos um, how did you meet these guys and how do you maintain such a strong bond that they get into an ice bath and eat ice cream with you? You know, you, cause <laughs> you're so close to these guys and they would seem like they would do anything for you. How, you know, what tips have you got for maintaining and building such strong friendships? Oh, great question, actually. Um, okay, so first I have a little history. Uh, I, I did have a – you know what a forum is on the Internet? Oh, like when you can send messages back and forth. Like you can on like a bulletin it. board. Ah, yeah, cool. yeah. You remember those? Remember forums? I used to have one for the website. Then uh, it got a lot of spam, so I quickly had to get rid of it. 
Yeah, I had this forum for tricking. Tricking is the acrobatic stuff I do. That's what it's called. And uh, this is before YouTube, Facebook. This is before all social media. This is back in 2002. And so I had this forum, and it had like up to 10,000 members before I closed it in 2009 because social media just sort of you know took over. And I was like, there's no point in having a forum anymore. I think forums are only good for like drug users and car people now. <laughs> but, I mean, their, their use is sort of uh, – yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of go back, and I did everything for free on this website. I offered all these tutorials. I offered a community for them to work together and communicate. And a lot of things were organized, events, and stuff was through my forum. So I was the administrator. I was the guy that ran all of it. And so a lot of my deep network kind of goes back to a lot of people just being appreciative of me for that historical uh, reason. It's like, hey, you were the guy that got me into all of this. You know, A lot of people will tell me that a lot for the tricking stuff. And as it as it moves on, um, you know, I, I continue to practice that. And so a lot of people still appreciate uh, that thing I did for them back then. But aside from that, tips for like just anyone else, I think a lot of people just get friendship wrong. I mean, think about this. Uh, do you plan your workouts, Ian? Uh, to an extent, I kind of just go and feel it out as I go along. I tried to go in with a main aim, but doesn't always work out that way i have a feeling you're pretty experienced with with training though so you're kind of instinctively training now am i correct yeah pretty much yeah is there anything that you do plan uh unfortunately i've i kind of get ocd when i'm stressed so mm -hmm. i tend to over plan everything like i plan to have a plan <laughs> you know it's that kind of mentality. yeah yeah, you plan to have a plan, you strategize. Okay, so when was the last time you, you planned and strategized your friendships? Hmm. Think about it for a second. Like, do you have a spreadsheet with, like, friends' names on it the last time you contacted these people, the last time you sent them a gift, you know, the last things you did together? I mean, a lot of people don't even think to do that. They don't even think, like, have you ever had a goal? Like, hey, my goal is to have more friends. My goal is to be a better friend. A lot of people don't even set goals like that. Their goals are, hey, I want a 600-pound deadlift. I want to get shredded abs. I want to make lots of money. The last time you actually made a goal like, hey, I want a lot of friends, and I want to be a good friend. Well, see, like I've got on my phone, I use Google Tasks. You know, like I say, one for my job, one for myself, one for the website, etc. And one of them has always been, oh, catch up with so-and-so or speak to so-and-so. And I've never, you know, life takes over. And before you know it, it's a week's gone by, then another week. And I think a lot of us are like that. We lose our friendships. We lose the ability to make new friends. And, you know, I mean, do you keep that spreadsheet? Is that how you maintain such you know, do you get in touch with people regularly or how do you do it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just make sure that, you know, it's like, Hey, I haven't talked to this dude in four months, but you know, he's, he's important to me. If they're important to you, you gotta, you gotta attach, you gotta anchor a reason why your friends are important as well. I mean, some friends is just, you know, life happens, different paths, let them go. It's okay. At least you enjoyed the time you had together. Hopefully no hard feelings, but other than that, you can look, you can, you can just start enlisting all the people you've been in contact with in, in your network and your friends. And you'd be like, wow, all these people, you know, I mean, they're good people to have as friends because we can help each other out. I can do this for this person and they can do this for me. So you got to kind of like create a little catalog of like, hey, these are all the reasons why this person's a good friend. And here are all the reasons why I, I could be a good friend to them. And it's just a whole different way of looking at friendship. A lot of people just feel it's supposed to be natural and organic and, you know, you just go by feel and it just sort of happens and it just sort of lacks the lazily go through their life with, you know, they end up one day with, you know, l losing touch with their friends or, or whatnot. Or, but hell, if you actually put some strategization and planning and, and thought into, into your network and your friendships, well, then – you know, I don't know. I feel like it's it's a hard argument to make against a better use of your time than than working on your friendships. No, I mean, what is it to say what gets measured gets managed, or I can't remember the exact quote. And I mean, would you say if you got dumped into a new city and you had no friends, you didn't know anybody, how would you go about it? Would it be the same sort of thing? Join a gym, join a trekking place, network people you might know who might know somebody there. Say somebody's listening who's just moved to a new place and wants to be like you, what would you advise them to do? All of the above. Everything you just said. I mean, just 
shotgun approach it, man. Just do everything. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, just go places, talk to people. I mean, look, here, something about me that's really weird is I didn't have a cell phone until I was 28. I had no cell phone until I was 28. So, you know, I didn't have a number. I had my parents' phone number. I lived in my parents' house. You know, uh, I didn't really use social media month much until a couple of years ago. I went through most of my growing up and twenties with none of the convenience of, Hey, let's swap phone numbers. Hey, what's your Facebook? Hey, check out this picture on my phone. Oh, Hey, what's your phone number? You know, I didn't have any of that. Um, but shit, that's all it takes. It's just like you're in the gym, working out with someone and you're like, Hey, you know, what's up? What's your name? You know, what do you do? Uh, can you spot me? Blah, blah, blah. You just, just talk to them for a second, you know, just make a passing comment. Or just yeah, and just just keep following up. Just be like, you know, if you if, if you think the person's cool, just you know, make friends. If not, then then whatever. <laughs> but just play the quantity game too. Just just don't get attached to to one person too much, and just keep moving along, going different places, and keeping track. Keeping track is a big deal. Just like I said, because that's something into it. Is like guys are meant to be strong and powerful and we're meant to be the king of the jungle where women it's you know they're emotional and they need a friend they need a pack of friends but i think we believe our own bullshit you know we believe that we can't admit weakness we can't admit we're lonely you know so how do you judge a guy as i could you know somebody who's cool that you'd want to be friends with what do you look in the kind of character traits of them hmm um, me or do you think is, is that particular to me or is that like what do you think most guys are looking for? Um, if, yeah, well, I mean, what do you look for? I mean, because I'm sure there'll be sort of common traits. Is there things like like strength of personality, or is it more a case of that they're they have your back, or you know, I mean, what kind of things makes the best okay, for you? Uh, okay, um, you know, is. It, a lot of people think it's cold, but, you know, one of the things that I look at friendship is, is it's an exchange. It has to be an exchange. Uh, there's, it's always an exchange. And I didn't really get really good at friendship until I opened a business and I realized working through business relationships that it was sort of like an amplified way of looking at friendships in the right way. It was just sort of like, look, um, we're not going to be friends if we're not getting something out of it, both of us. So for me, to look at someone and be like, hey, that'd be a great friend. They have to be useful to me in some way. But aside from that, you know, in order for the friendship to remain balanced, I have to look at them and be like, I can be useful to them in some way. Just looking at it in a very utilitarian way turns a lot of people off. But, you know, I can't complain that I have any lack of friends and I don't think any of my friends are going to say, hey, you know, he's a jerk or anything. <laughs> I have a, have a pretty, uh, have a pretty healthy, a healthy balance of friends and friendships and network. And a lot of it's just from looking at it that way. Like this dude could do these things for me. I can do these things for him. And yeah. So when I'm looking at someone and assessing whether they're going to be a, you know, someone I want to spend more time with or get to know, I just have to see like, is there anything about the, you know, and that's what I dig around when I talk to him and stuff. It's like, you know, what is this person good at? You know? I mean, it's true. You see that as like, uh, friendship's a relationship you know it's a partnership and it's like a contract you're spending your time with them so they need something for, in return and it's the other way around and no I really like that it's so talking of relationships and you know best friends to be hopelessly romantically disgusting how has been married to, uh, changed you as a person you know how did it change your outlook because you're still pretty insane if you watch your videos but <laughs> You know, how did it, what did it change about you or did it make you grow in a certain way or your view on what's important in life? Oh, uh, I mean, it changed everything for the better. I mean, it just completely made me a, so much of a better person. Everything started working out for me when I got uh, in a good uh, romantic relationship with, you know, I'm now married to her. Um, it's, it just changed me for the better in, in every way way i can actually i can't think of a i can't think of a single drawback actually because every time i see that video and i hear the oh sam you know it's just <laughs> like, uh, no i mean um, when how long ago did you meet her i met her in 2000 let's see uh we got together in 2012 and we've been married uh three years now almost so uh, about five years 
And do you think, I mean, was it difficult not to slip into the, well, I better stop flipping, I better stop doing these insane videos, you know, or did she encourage that in any way? Uh, yeah, well, um, how, I'm trying to remember how exactly, uh, she's special. She's she's definitely, uh, she's spe- she's definitely different. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. She's, maybe she's maybe not say that to her. Yeah, no, she, no, she knows she's moments uh, I, you can't change i mean for someone else like that i mean you can change for the better in ways that you that you would want to change like if you get with someone and they're inspiring you to eat better then hell yeah that's a good change but who you are and the things that are positive and, and make make you you know feel fulfilled like you have a place in this universe i can't just stop doing the things that make me me you know you are what you do i am this guy that has a strange sense of humor and likes to make videos and make people feel welcomed in fitness and kind of combine a whole uh, array of different movements to sort of, you know, make people think a little, it's just this crap I do. And, you know, she just has to accept that, that that's that. And, you know, if I had any indication from the beginning of the relationship that this is something that was going to be threatened, uh, you know, I would not make that trade. You know what I mean? Yeah, because we, unfortunately we've all had friends who have changed as people or disappeared, or when you meet them you kind of go, ooh, that's uh, like that was a shell of who they truly are, you know, because they tried to impress the female. And I, I find that really sad when you see it, and then they spend so long when they come out of it that they have to try to find somebody else because mm-hmm. they don't feel worthy of being themselves. And it's 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 a really sad state of affairs, and... Yeah, I've had a friend who was like that. You know, he needs, he can only feel complete with another person, and that's what I really like about you is that you're, you could see that you're the same person regardless of who you're with, uh, what situation you're in. Even when you're bench pressing, was it three hundred and fifteen, <laughs> lying in bed beside your wife, it was just kind of, yeah, yeah. She's, she's definitely a keeper, you know. If she lets that sort of thing, so. Can you tell me a little bit, one of the things I really was interested when I found out was that you taught yourself to do some of these amazing flips and corkscrews and back flips and, you know, so you were just watching videos and then you went out into your backyard and started trying to do a back flip, you know, how how on earth did you keep that going, the mental toughness to oh, stop as uh, soon as you landed on your head? I, I just... I... I wanted it. <laughs> I just really fucking wanted it. I was like, this shit's cool. I got to learn to do this. You know, I just watch these videos. I mean, this is the tricking has been underground. The, this, the type of movements it's called tricking. It, it's, it's been underground for, it's still underground. Many people still don't really know about it. They see people do certain moves and stuff, but they don't really know, you know, the origin of it or it, it's just really started to pick up around the year 2000, 1999 or so. So I got into it. Uh, near the beginning of, you know, the internet and, and the beginning of it. So, uh, there's nothing there, dude. There's like no websites about it almost at all, except for like one. There's no tutorials. And there's like nothing that you could actually, almost nothing you could use to like help you in any way with this other than just like talking to some people on a very limited message board at the time. And so it's just what you had to do. You just had to open a video, crack it open, and be like, look, I look at this guy's toes before he jumps. Okay, look at his arms. Look at where his head is positioned. You just study that crap, and you go out and you try it yourself. And hell, if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way you said that. You know, like, um, I can't remember what, what video it was when you just said, yeah, I just I had no coach, so I just thought, ah, why not? You know, I just mm-hmm. wanted to do that, so let's give it a stab. You know, it's just like, where just other people who, they look at you, I mean, that's how I first saw you was you were deadlifting and then doing a backflip and then straight into a deadlift. And I thought, <laughs> what the fuck is good? Yeah, you were then wearing rollerblades to do like, with squat, what was it, with the splits with the deadlifts. <laughs> and I was thinking, what is this guy on? But. And do you think anybody can learn to like backflip and flip and stuff like that? Is it literally? Uh, I mean, I, I think, think uh, people overestimate the difficulty of certain things. To be honest, I mean, it's not that. It's, I mean, if if you're if you look like a like a, a normal guy that works out, not grossly overweight, not like 
seven feet tall, just like the average, you know, the average size. You could do a backflip. It's it's really not that hard, but people uh, people think it's insane. It's just they overestimate the difficulty of it. So how would you, like, because you've got a very analytical mind, you know, how do you start building this up? Like, how do you t- take a, say, for the backflip, was it literally just a case of try it, just push off the floor, try to flip yourself over, or did you go, okay, I'll work on the jump part, then I'll tack my knees, and then I'll X, Y, Z. You know, do you break it down? I think I just kept just trying it and just kept realizing that every thing I was trying wasn't fucking working. And then uh, someone, uh, a friend of mine who was training with me, uh, he got it, and I was like, damn you! You know, it's like, how'd you do that? He said, I got a spotter. It's like, what, what is that? He's like, well, someone just helps you over. It's what gymnastics people do. You know, they have someone stand there. I tried a spotter, and I got it in 15 minutes. So, I mean, it was just sort of like I tried something else. It's just like if it's, if it's not working, then, uh, you know, try something else. Give it, give it a moment to see if it works. And if it doesn't, just – it's it, the whole thing behind it is that I cared. I actually cared. I wanted it. It's just I can't tell you why. I just thought it was awesome. I thought the backflip was cool. I still do. It's one of my favorite moves to do. I still do it. But it's just I wanted it. If you want something – uh for whatever reason, you have to have reasons for wanting it. But if you feel it strong enough, you'll do anything. You'll just like, you'll try anything. You'll just keep trying. You'll keep thinking about it. You'll obsess over it and then you'll get it. So, I mean, what kind of things are you wanting to do now? You know, what kind of, have you got an uh, ultimate goal for your acrobatics? I mean, some of the stuff you're doing, like the parkour videos, the, the different Taekwondo, uh, Taekwondo kicks and stuff is just like, when you, especially when you slow it down, you know, what's the ultimate? Well, at the moment, someone uh, was it? Someone told me I was the Mike Rowe, you know, the dirty jobs guy. He told me I was the Mike Rowe of fitness, mm-hmm. and I really liked that. I took it as a big compliment. I was like, you know, that that's kind of a good <laughs> path to take. I'll just try everything. I'll be the guy that tries it all because it seems like whatever I try, I have such a strong foundation and a very background that I'm not completely awful at it. You know, it's actually like I have a chance. I'm still young enough and, uh, you know, healthy enough and uh, have a nice foundation that I still have a chance to actually, like, experience it in a way where I can actually see, like, hey, this could work. And that's exciting. And it's, it's fun to discover and, and share, like, what it feels like for my audience in that way. So, I mean, as far as an ultimate goal right now, I'm, I'm just sort of a, a dabbler in, in, in a lot of everything. And just I just kind of want to be – I want to be – I want to, I want to be able to say like, Hey, uh, you know, I could do this and you could probably do this better, but can you do this too? And if you could do that too, can, can you do this too? You know, it's, it's sort of like, uh, sort of like collecting skills, kind of like a uh, Pokemon collecting Pokemon. <laughs> uh, okay. So I see Cause that's what I was puzzled at first was, you know, that you did the martial arts, which is very kind of controlled and regulated <laughs> And then you were doing the, you know, the weightlifting. But then suddenly you were doing what the free flowing parkour and the, you know, the acrobats and stuff. And I thought, what was the reasoning behind putting them together? Is it just you wanted to dabble and just to try it to see if it would work? You know, it, it just seems a strange mix between controlled and just let it flow. You know, was was there a reason behind it or did you just want uh, to go, Kind of both. Eh, I mean, I mean, the reason, I mean, the initial reason like four or five years ago when I got into bodybuilding, uh, see, I had already been weightlifting like in my early 20s. I was, I was doing a lot of strength training because I wanted to make my acrobatic moves better. So my, my, the very start was martial arts and acrobatic tricks and stuff. So that's sort of my starting point. And then I got into the weight training and I just because every every professional athlete in the world like lifts weights. They do resistance training. They do something for strength to carry over into their sport. Okay, so I was smart enough to go, hey, you know, no other trickster. It was like a skateboarding culture, man. They, they're not doing any of that stuff back then. They were just like going out there and flinging crap in the backyard. Well, I was like, look, if I lift weights, I'm gonna be better than them. But the bug bit me. Like I was like, I like this too much, and I started doing it to the point where I was actually interfering with my moves. And then I had to learn to balance them, you know? So I was like, okay, I'm trying to achieve a level of both of them that doesn't really mix, you know, a level of strength and a level, it just, they don't work together. And that sort of became 
my thing. This is like balancing two things that don't work. And then I threw in bodybuilding and then it really didn't work because when you're a fucking giant tumor, you can't jump in the air very well, <laughs> very well. You know, it's just, it's just like, okay, I'm a 235 pound man doing moves that no other 235 pound man can do. So it, it teaches you, it taught me a lot about training and, and the lessons I learned from it and just the unique perspectives and stuff that come from trying to do something weird like that, that I guess no one else is doing. And that's, it's fun. I'm trying to do things that no one else is doing because I feel like I'm a pioneer. Dude, it's so motivating when you feel like you're doing something and no one else is doing that no one has done. It's just like, yeah, it's just like, I'm going to discover this. It's the same experience I got when I used to run out my backyard and try shit. It's just try flinging moves and stuff because there's no tutorials. It's like, it's exciting. It's like, no one can tell me how to do this because no one's done it. Oh, yeah, you know. Well, you're, you're, well, you're definitely a pioneer because I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody even think mm -hmm. about throwing a back flip in after a deadlift, you know? Because whenever I say to people or oh, I'm interviewing Juicy, you know, they go, who? And they go, uh, where's Pink Tutu did, um, you know, stretched his legs across yeah. two chairs? Oh, that guy! You know, it's like everybody knows who you are because you're, you're doing, you're you doing what you want to do. Like, so... Is there anybody that you've trained with, you know, that's like internet famous or famous? Because I noticed you do a lot of collaborations lately. Um, is there anybody that's really surprised you? Like, um, has there been somebody who's maybe well known in a certain area that suddenly can backflip or, you know, can do, has got a lot of flexibility uh, more than you, uh, you know, imagined they would have? I, I can't think of anyone that's like surprised me in terms of like being able to do any sort of acrobatics or flexibility oriented stuff, but I have a tendency to always find something in, in someone that surprises me as, as a good quality, like that's respectable. I, I always look for the best in people in that. Res I always do that. So I never underestimate anyone. I learned the hard way not to do that. Uh, never underestimate anyone that is a fat slob in the grocery store and you're going to judge them because it's like, Oh, that guy doesn't look like he has his life together. Well, that guy might know something about electricity or uh, repairing computers or taxes that, that you will never know, and he, you know, he'd fucking blow you away with you know, his knowledge and that stuff. So I'm always looking for like everyone's hidden, hidden power, you know, it's just because it's fun. And so when you're talking about meeting and collabing with uh, you know, other people in the fitness industry and uh, you know, these superstars, so to speak, you know, I might not find something that's like relevant to what I do, but I'm always looking for something that's going to surprise me like that, and I always do. I always find some things like, wow, that person's really got that together. Because you know what I'm doing? I'm just trying to find, I'm trying to learn something. I'm trying, I'm trying to see like, hey, like this person, there's got to be something they can do. There's something, the way of looking at something they have. I want, I want to find the best parts and I want to just take them and use them. And, you know, it's, that's that. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, they're getting, it's like, you know, you're talking about when the friendship thing is, you're getting something from it, and so are they. You know, they're getting the promotion where you're getting to discover something about them, and it's what I do with this website. You know, it's I, I want to interview people, but I don't want to just go, oh, what's your book about? What's the, you know, the same thing that you'd hear again and again. I want to get to know the real person, and I want to interview people who make me go, wow, I want to be like them. You know, that part of them is really inspiring. And you were one of those people that I looked at and I thought, he's, some, <laughs> he's a guy I want to go for a pint with. He's a guy that I'd love to have as a friend, you know, because you're just natural, you're humble. You're There's just so, you know, there's a lot about it. And I, I sometimes think mm -hmm. people don't understand it in interviews I've heard where they kind of just, they treat you like a fitness guy where there's so much more to you. They don't kind of understand understand it because you're a pioneer like you said so how did you build this brand you know how did you make to get people so interested oh yeah in uh, into okay this? i think the thing that i think the thing that works for my branding and uh pulling people and it's sort of attracting people is because i've been on the other side and i know it annoys me like i know what type of posts on social media just annoy me it's like here's a here's a bunch of bottles of supplements with a 10 percent coupon code oh boy use it and make me it's just like oh shit leave me alone <laughs> you know things like that oh no it's it's fine i mean people I've, have to I've do it that. if 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 they're working with it but it's just like i know it annoys me i know i'm a good consumer it's cuz i i'm a very very skeptical consumer i'm a very uh very hard and uh 
And so I, I know how to, I try not to annoy my audience. I try my best not to, not to, it's, it's sort of indirect marketing. It's like, look, I cannot manufacture a product or sell something or an idea or write something or do anything if I wouldn't use it myself, if I'm not going to continue to use it myself, if I don't like it, if I think it's shit, I'm not going to put it out there. So as long as I'm just making stuff that I'm going to use, people are eventually going to catch on. It's like, oh, he keeps taking these pills or what are they? Oh, it's oh, he makes a joint supplement. OK, you know, it's like it's sort of like that. I just I'm going to do me. And if they really care, they're going to dig in to figure out a little bit more about me. And then, you know, oh, OK, so he believes in this so strongly that he probably doesn't always have to rub it in our faces. OK, so that's meaningful to me. And that's, that's sort of the way I, I build my brand and build up, you know, a network is I just, I try not to bug people, man. I just, I want to, I want to provide something that makes them happy. And you're doing a fantastic job of it. I mean, the, what, there's so much content there that people should check out. What do you like the most? You know, what three of your videos should people check out straight away? You know, what oh, are you I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you just want to, you know, kind of get the instant gratification, like, oh, these are crazy videos, just go down my Instagram feed. You're going to find barely any advertisements. It's just going to be crazy thumbnails of like short little videos. It's like, what the fuck is going on? It's just, you know, just check it out. Just go down the rabbit hole in my Instagram. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people love just kind of like going through and clicking all the way down. You know, just and as far as YouTube goes, I do vlogs on YouTube. I mean, the more you watch, the more you kind of get connected to my story as I'm progressing. So, you know, if you watch a few of them, um, a lot of people have told me they binge watch. You know, a lot of them after they kind of like discovered it. And I'm trying to go somewhere. I'm trying to trying to provide value to people just like, Hey, this is, I'm not going to rub all these lessons and stuff in your face. I'm just going to like, Hey, I'm going to do me. And occasionally I'm going to like say something that might be useful to you or just do some crazy shit that, that seems fun. And yeah. So I don't know, but no, well, you're, do, you're, you're doing a great job of it because I can guarantee you that when I, I review a lot of people who don't even get inter, uh, who don't even get invites from me sometimes, and I read their Instagram and I check it for their messages and all this kind of stuff. And yours was possibly the most insane, bizarre, and interesting <laughs> you. Instagram I've seen in a long time. It, it, it blew me away with just the insanity, but you couldn't stop watching it. You know, it was just so much fun, and I loved the fact that you guys were having fun. You know, it wasn't you just like talking down to us you were talking like you were sitting watching with a beer you know and i really love that about you you know you just feel like somebody that you can be warm and friendly and you can just naturally get pulled in towards so i've got a couple of minutes left i know you've got to to go but can you just tell me like guilty, ple- uh, guilty pleasure taking too many stimulants and cleaning <laughs> Like what you take take the before you work out, except for I'll just like fucking clean out a garage or some shit. It's just I don't know. Cleaning is cathartic to me. It's sort of like it makes me happy. It's just I get the same feeling from cleaning as like people who are addicted to video games might get. I, I'd imagine because I used to play video games when I was really young, and so like yeah, that's a guilty pleasure of mine. It's just like God, I just want to like reorganize this entire room and just like I'm gonna paint this and I'm gonna move this. And I'm gonna label it's it's sick. It, I think I'm slightly. Got a, I got a slight problem, <laughs> but it's productive. It hasn't. I mean, it interferes with my life a little bit because, uh, you know, things aren't a problem until they start to interfere with your life. It interferes a little bit, but I can't really measure how much it interferes because then later I'll go through. It's like, oh, it's right here. I know exactly where this is. Oh, this is this is easy. I can I can get all this stuff together real quick because everything's organized. It just looks good. So what kind of video games were you playing? You know, were you a shooting a shooting fan? Were you like a sports fan? Were you a mix and max? Or you know? Oh sure. I mean, I, I pretty much uh, slowed down in the video games. Uh, you know, in my early teens, but uh, first person shooters, role playing games, and fighting games, two D fighting games. It's a good genre. It's just a little of everything, I suppose. That's good. Well, like you, you know, weightlifting, acrobatics, husband. <laughs> All right, when you when are you going to take an ice bath? When are you going to get that in was one? That's a bit bizarre. Um, uh, <laughs> maybe, I'll tell you what, if you come to Scotland, I'll yeah, buy you a pint uh, and I'll get Oh, yeah, have bath. you ever maybe drunk in an ice bath? bath? Uh, not for a, uh, I usually have a beer in the <laughs> that shower. That was unexpected, I like that, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> 
No, if you get an ice cold beer and you're sitting in the bath with a film, you're like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this, this is when you know you've made it, you know. So, so I mean, I could literally talk to you for hours and hours and hours, but I know that you're a really busy guy, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But can you tell? Uh, I've just literally got sort of two questions left. What would you say to everybody listening? You know, what do you want them to take away from this interview? You know, why? Why should they come and find out more about you, and what should the message be? I would say that everyone listening up to this point, I want to thank you for listening up to this point. I want to say that you are okay. You're an okay person. So, <laughs> And I want you to remember that. Um, I do have a sign. It's a, a rather large painted sign in my backyard. It's just, it just sits there. And in red letters, it just says, you are okay. And I just wrote that one day and I just left it out there and I can't tell you how many times it's been there for three months. I can't tell you how many times I'm looking at it right now, I'm looking at it from out, out the window of my house. And I can't tell you how many times it's like just having that sit there has just made me feel like, Hey, I'm okay. I don't need to worry about anything I've done. I could just continue on and I'm going to be okay because I'm always going to have the best instinct to make myself better. And I think a lot of people just have to have, sort of trust themselves that, hey, they're okay. You're going to be okay, and you're always going to do the best you can for yourself. And I think that's something a lot of people need to remember. You know, I think that's a, a, a brilliant message. Um, and what's an, an unusual fact about yourself that will make people go, oh, God, uh, I wish unusual I fact. to this point? Well, if, if the little-known fact, li- other than like little known getting fact. all hopped up on stimulants and, and cleaning, um <laughs> A uh, little known fact. Uh, okay, I got one. It's pretty personal, and I haven't said this anywhere else. You ready? Uh, pretty personal. Yeah, I've never really said this anywhere else, but uh, here, here's here's something that I, I want to be kind of grateful for, for something that sort of happened to me in life. And, uh, and I think it really helped me out as I got older. So it sort of set me up for success. Uh, when I was dating in my 20s, I had a tendency to – to just like, I don't know, it's just sort of a, a natural ability just to like, like if this person wasn't going to work out, I would end it on the first date. Just that, that'd be it. I wouldn't carry on. I wouldn't feel so, so attached. I, I learned to be alone. I taught myself to be alone and be okay with myself. Um, and so I didn't even really have a real relationship until I was like 28 because of that. So I didn't really waste my time like getting in and out of relationships to so all these like broken relationships here and there and, and having all that scar tissue and whatever. It's just when I, when I found the one, I knew it and that was it. I just took care of it and I'm still with her and perfectly, perfectly, uh, damn, I didn't waste any time in my twenties, like, you know, dragging through a bad relationship. So if you're doing everything you can, if, if you listen to the part where I talked about uh friendship and strategizing relationships, if you're doing everything to better yourself and your relationships and really working hard to make sure you're, making those good, then uh, if it's if it's still not a, a healthy relationship, you got to learn to just cut it and just, you know, go to the next person because eventually you'll find the right person. That's probably one of the best answers I've ever had. You know, I, I love the way you looked at that and it's just... You're, you're, we have quite a bit in common, you know. I, I wish I'd killed off some relationships sooner than I did and... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, so happy but that I can you tell you, like, somebody I can tell you that I was really um, self-conscious about it, it through it, my 20s. It's just uh, I never really had a relationship, and I just felt like people, hey, were judging me for it. Or, you know, it's one of the points of that I was most self-conscious about. But, damn, if it didn't work out. <laughs> and I bet you're kind of glad for mm-hmm. what it yeah, taught you. Yeah, very glad. You learned so from it, was, uh, it was – it, and it's a unique experience. It's just, um, you know, like I said about jumping in ice baths and deadlifts and, hey, you know, that's a unique experience. It was sort of a unique way of of going through, uh, you know, my 20s like that. It was, it was unique. Not very many people can say, hey, you know, didn't really have a relationship until my first one when I got married. So, Well, I, I'm very grateful for you for sharing that. You know, it's made me even respect you even more. Um, I can't I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this. I've been smiling the whole way through. I could literally keep talking for hours, but I know you're a busy guy, so I'll let you go. But 
how can people keep in touch with you? You know, how can we see the insanity that's about to unroll? How can we follow you in your latest projects? Have you got uh, no seminars like coming seminars up? But I'm, I'm working on another book. Um, the first book was Legendary Flexibility. LegendaryFlexibility.com. It, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. Actually, is write that book. Imagine writing a book on flexibility and just like okay. R- imagine writing a book on strength. Just the book is called Strength. And it has to change the way people think about it. It's like, good God, shoot me. It's too vast, you know. That's the way I felt about writing that flexibility book. But I did it. I nailed it. I got it. Everyone loves it. But, yeah, that's that's uh, legendaryflexibility.com. You can check out that product. But other than that, it's just check me out on YouTube slash Jujimufu, Instagram slash Jujimufu, or Jujimufu.com. It's just I got it all nice and nice and uh, parallel now. <laughs> And that's a G U K I M U F U. Yeah, I for a while there I was thinking, how the hell yeah. did I spell that when I typed into Google? But I'll include all I'll include all the links on the post because <laughs> it's not it's not the usual way of uh, name you see. Well, I cannot thank you enough. You've been an absolute star. You've blown my mind at just how in, how nice and you know how deep and helpful and intelligent you are i love your videos you know you're going to be an absolute superstar and uh let me know when the new book's out and i'll happily promote it um you know i wish you nothing but success for the future you're yeah uh, thank you Ian. this is nice this is a breath 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 a breath of fresh breath of fresh air here talking to you about all this stuff that isn't just you know about training splits and and macronutrients. <laughs> That's it for another week. Thanks for listening. Absorb it. Practice it. Use it. Until next time, keep trying to hit that next level in your life.